Okay, welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to talk about the resolution ability of the human eye. Now the human eye is built in such a way that we have a pupil that actually can dilate and shrink depending upon the lighting conditions. And for typical people, uh, the diameter of the pupil can be anywhere from 2 to 9 millimeters. 9 millimeters typically for younger people where the, the pupil can really dilate when in very dark conditions. And 2 under very bright conditions when the pupil become very small. Of course, age and, uh, and size and so forth, there's a, quite a variation in them. But let's say for the sake of our problem here, let's assume that the, that the average distance of 4 millimeters is about the right size for the pupil. And let's say that the light that we're observing is, uh, has a wavelength of 500 nanometers. And we'll do three sets of the, uh, three portions of this problem. In one case, we're going to try to find the, the resolution at the distance of 20 kilometers. Then we're going to find the resolution at the distance of 100 meters. It's kind of like the length of a football field. And finally, the resolution of 25 centimeters, which is the typical reading distance of a person. All right, what can we resolve? What can we see? What can we separate at a distance? So let's say we're looking at a mountain or two peaks of a mountain uh, at a distance of 20 kilometers. How far away can those peaks be so we can still distinguish them as two separate peaks? And, uh, well, in order to do that, we need the equation that the sine of theta is equal to the wavelength divided, oh, not the way we're missing our very famous constant of 1.22, 1.22 times the wavelength divided by the diameter of the aperture. In this case, the aperture is the pupil of the eye. And uh, so what do we want to know? Well, we want to know the distance between them. Well, we'll get to that in just a moment. Let's first find the angle. So we can say that the sine of theta, the sine of theta is equal to 1.22 times lambda. Lambda would be 500 nanometers, 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. And the diameter of the, eye of the pupil would be 4 millimeters or 0.004 meters. All right, that'll give us the sine of theta. Well, we can put it in terms of of theta, which would be radians as well. So let's do that first. All right, 500 e to the 9 minus divided by 0 0.004 times 1.22 equals, so the sine of theta is equal to 1.525 times 10 to the minus 4. Okay, that means that theta is equal to 1.525 times 10 to the minus 4 radians. And if you want to convert that to degrees, we have to multiply times the ratio of 57.3 degrees per radian. So if we multiply that times 57.3 times 57.3 equals, that gives us 8.74, 8.74 times 10 to the minus 3, and that would be degrees. All right, now. How far apart can we separate things at 20 kilometers? So now we need to use a little bit of geometry. So let's take the two points right there, separation distance, and let's say that this here is equal to the distance between them, the separation distance, and so let's say that's the length or the distance to the object. Here we are, here's our eyeball. We're looking at two objects. Let's say in this case, L is equal to 20 kilometers. And so we want to know what the distance is between them. Of course, again, we're dealing with very small angles, as you can see. So therefore, at small angles, the sine of theta is approximately equal to the tangent of theta, which is, which is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side, d over l. Which means that the sine of theta, which is equal to this quantity right there, can be said equal to the, to the tangent of theta, which is equal to d over l. So therefore, we can say that 1.525 times 10 to the minus 4 radians, that's equal to the sine of theta, is equal to d over l. Is equal to d over l. In other words, d is equal to l times the sine of theta. So therefore, that's equal to 20 kilometers or 20,000 meters. Multiply it times 1.5 to 5 times 10 to the minus 4. So divide by 57.3 and times 20,000 equals, and the answer is 3.05 meters, so about 3.05 meters, 
which means at a distance of 20 kilometers, the human eye is capable of distinguishing two objects three meters apart. Now that seems pretty am amazing, pretty incredible. Of course, there are some conditions that need to be true. For one thing, the air quality needs to be perfect. The vision of the person needs to be perfect. The color needs to be such that it's easily seen. The contrast between colors needs to be able to be seen. And of course, the lighting has to be correct as well. If all that is correct, a person can actually see something three meters apart, a distance of 20 kilometers. That is absolutely amazing. The human vision is absolutely superb and capable of seeing incredible things at very long distances. Well, let's see what we can distinguish at a distance of 100 meters. Same thing, the resolution angle would be the same, but at 100 meters, so at 100 meters, we can see that the separation distance of two objects that we can see across the length of a football field is equal to L times the sine of theta. So in this case, that would be 100 meters times uh, the sine of, so you can also write in this format, so to see sine of 8.74 times 10 to the minus 3 degrees. So we get 8.74 e to the 3 minus, take the sine of that and multiply it times 100, and we get 1.5 centimeters. So it's equal to 0 0.1, oh, 0 0.015 meters, 0 0.015 meters, which is equal to 1.5 centimeters. We can actually see an object about this size from a distance of 100 meters. So if somebody stands at the, length, at the other end of the football field and holds up a pen like that, we should be able to see the pen because that width is about one half centimeters. Be it the right color with the right contrast, good conditions, person with good eyesight can see this from a distance of 100 meters. That's amazing. And finally, a typical reading distance, what can we see? So when the distance is 25 centimeters, so we're reading a textbook, how small an object can we see with the naked eye? So this distance is equal to L times the sine of theta, which is equal to 0 0.25 meters times the sine of 8.74 times 10 to the minus 3 degrees. And let's see what we get for that. So 8.74 E3 minus, take the sine of that times 0.25 equals, and we get 0. Point, wow, 3.8 times 10 to the minus 5 meters. That's 3.8 times 10 to the minus 5 meters, which is equal to 38 micrometers which is equal to 0 0.038 millimeters. Something slightly bigger than a third of a tenth of a millimeter. Wow, why do I say a third of a tenth of a millimeter? Because I remember when I was a kid and I took drafting in school, I had a, I had a pen that had a line width of a tenth of a millimeter. So I was able to draw a line of a tenth of a millimeter in thickness. And sure enough, of course, 0 0.1 millimeter, and I had no problem seeing that. Not even the teacher with the older eyes could see that. Yet, what this is telling me, that if the line had a line width one third of that, I should still be able to see it, because my line eyesight from 25 centimeters away should have that capability of angle of resolution. Again, everything under the right conditions, right lighting, right color, and so forth. So if I have if you have a very, very thin pen that can make a line of the width of a 0 0.038 millimeters, wow, one thirty of a millimeter thick, we should still be able to see it. And that's how I, the resolution of the human eye works. It has tremendous capability, and this is how we can calculate it. Again, it comes down to this equation right there, which allows us to see what the resolution angle is for a particular aperture at whatever distance. And that's how we do that.